Well, good morning. So awesome everybody's here for Youth Sunday. Uh, What a privilege it is to uh, be the youth pastor of these young people here. Uh, My name is Jay Van Gelder, and uh, I just love my job. So uh, I love these guys and love uh, their uh, enthusiasm about uh, worshiping, enthusiasm about uh, uh, God and all the things that come along with that in our journey uh, with him. And so this morning we have kind of a a neat uh, thing that's going to be happening is we're going to show you the whole faith journey here. Um, Every step of the faith journey is going to be celebrated as a spiritual marker in these young people's lives. And so there's a few uh, different things that happen is uh, we have infant baptism for some and uh, some uh, uh, they decide uh, when they're older they want to be baptized. Um, Others uh, accepted Christ for the first time. Others are going to make a public profession of faith. And then lastly, we have some uh, student that is going to join the church and become a member of Hope Church. And so we call these spiritual markers in their lives where each time they kind of put in that marker that they're going down this path to being fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. And it's exciting times when we see all these young people saying yes to Jesus and uh, yes to following him and yes to saying, I want the congregation to hold me accountable in my walk with uh, the Lord. And so we're going to start that here this morning with our first infant baptism. Good morning. Um, My name is Russell Mullenberg. I'm also on the pastoral staff here. Uh, These gentlemen with us, Doug Siepkes, Brad Olson, and Terry Johnson, are part of our elder board. And so as Jay talked about these spiritual markers, it's really one of the responsibilities of the board of elders to um, kind of shepherd our young people, all of us, uh, through these spiritual markers. And they're going to um, so they're going to help us with that this morning. And we, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've got to talk with the families and the young people who are taking these steps. And uh, several of them commented it's the best part of uh, being an elder is to be a part of this sort of thing. So today uh, we're going to celebrate the infant baptism of Caden Mitchell and Royce Thomas, the sons of Dan and Caitlin Sherbun. And we're also going to celebrate the baptism of Caitlin Wilfong, who is also professing her faith today. Now, baptism, uh, 
whether for infants or adults, a key symbol of baptism is water. Going back all the way to John the Baptist, water symbolized cleansing and new life. For us who believe in Jesus Christ, the water is a symbol of Christ's blood shed for us on the cross. Baptism is a reminder that we need the cleansing that only Christ can offer. Of course, infants, little children, aren't old enough to know about all of that. By pouring water on them today, we're not saying that they believe in Jesus. Um, it's not the water that saves, only the grace of Jesus extended to us at the cross. And the same goes for Caitlin. She understands what baptism means, but it's not her decision so much to be baptized as what Jesus has already done in claiming her um, that offers her salvation. She is undergoing baptism today to affirm that belief in Jesus. What baptism is really all about is promises. There are promises that the parents will be making to raise their children in faith. There are the promises Caitlin makes to follow him and promises that we as a congregation make to support these families and individuals provide an environment where Jesus is known and taught. But the most important promise in baptism is always the promise that God is making. Because in baptism, God is promising that all who believe in Jesus Christ will be saved. It's a promise extended to the children, sort of like a blank check that's awaiting their endorsement on the day they personally accept Jesus. And it's a promise that Caitlin is claiming today. It's also a promise to all of the rest of us as well. The promise is that if we do believe in Jesus, then just as surely as the water of baptism cleanses our skin, so too does Christ's blood cleanse all of us of our sin. So these are twins, and mom and dad promised this is Caden, right, and this is Royce, and you haven't switched them on me. <laughs> because if they do that, then I'm, I'm going to be very messed up. So, Dan and Caitlin, you stand before us, having brought these children to receive the sacrament of baptism. I ask you, therefore, before God and Christ church, to reject evil, to profess your faith in Christ, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? Who is your Lord and Savior? And do you promise to instruct these children in the truth of God's word, in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, to pray for them and to teach them to pray, to train them in Christ's way by your example through worship and in the nurture of the church? Caden Sherbon, for you, Jesus Christ came into the world. For you, he died and he conquered death. And for you, he did all of this, even though you know nothing of it yet. We love because God first loved us. And so, Caden Sherbon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Caden Sherban, child of the covenant, in baptism you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and might marked as Christ's own forever. Royce. Royce Sherban, for you, Jesus Christ came into the world. For you, Jesus Christ died and conquered death. All this he did for you, little one, though you know nothing of it yet. We love because Christ first loved. And so, Royce Sherbon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Royce Sherbon, child of the covenant, in baptism you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. All right.
On behalf of the Board of Elders, I present Caitlin Wilfong, who has made her profession of faith and comes to receive the sacrament of baptism. Caitlin Wilfong, <laughs> you stand before us and receive the sacrament of baptism, and I ask you, therefore, before God and Christ's church to reject evil, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of, church, of the church. Do you renounce sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? Who is your Lord and Savior? And do you commit your life to live according to the truth of God's word and to follow Christ's way through worship and service in the nurture and fellowship of the church? Caitlin Wilfong, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm, I'm sure they're rejoicing in heaven as well. Please pray with me as, as we pray for these uh, baptisms. Gracious God, we thank you that you cleanse and renew these, your children, through the grace alone. Bless and strengthen them daily with the gift of your Holy Spirit. Unfold to them the riches of your love, deepening their faith, keeping them from the power of evil, and enabling them to live a holy, blameless life until your kingdom come. Amen. At this time, I'd like all the students that accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior to come on and join us on the platform at this time. This is another mile marker when a student makes a decision to commit their lives to Jesus and accept him as their, his personal Lord and Savior. The steps along that journey begin to participate in communion. And a couple of months ago, our middle school youth group took a spiritual retreat. And while others have been going through our mentoring program here, these students asked Jesus into their heart. And while there we talk about what Jesus has done for us and what it means to give our lives to him, these students made a commitment to accept Jesus. And a few weeks ago, they met with the elder board and professed their faith and will now begin taking communion. And so the students are Eliza Edwards, Dalton Flickema, J.D. Salton, Ashton Versteg, Brooke Mosier, Caitlin Wilfong, Alexa Johnson, Camden Van Gelder, Allie Irwin, and Sadie Nelson. These are the students that accepted Christ. Let's celebrate with them. And some of those students said, you know, I want to uh, publicly profess my faith at this time to be held accountable to the church. So if you guys would step forward, that'd be great. This is another mile marker. Oh, we got them. Yes. Oh, we got a few more to join us. That's right. So these kids uh, made want to make profession of faith publicly. And uh, so they have met with the elders also. This is a decision that is not to be taken lightly as it says to others, I want to be held accountable for the faith that I have in Jesus Christ. This marker, the youth meet with the elders and share their faith story and share what Christ means to them personally. The step also along the journey is a beginning to participate and celebrate in uh, communion if they haven't already done so. So the students this morning who have professed their faith before the elders are Eliza Edwards, Dalton Flickema, J.D. Salton, Brooke Mosier, Caitlin Wilfong, Alexa Johnson, Camden Van Gelder, Addie Gilderhus, Grace Gilderhus, and Hallie Mingus are the students that made profession of faith.
pray for these young commitments. Let us pray for these young commitments. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace you give in Jesus Christ. We thank you that, like a shepherd searching for a lost lamb, you have searched for each of these students. Thank you that they have been found, and they have put now their they have now put their trust in you. Amen. I'll say, okay, one more step on a student's journey then is to join the membership of the church. Just as we do with adults, we hold a starting point class for students where we learn to share our God story and talk about what it means to be a part of the church. And we have one student today. The Board of Elders have heard the testimony of Mackenzie Connor and have welcomed her into the congregation. We will recognize Mackenzie's commitment and asking her the membership questions at the second service. Let us pray for Mackenzie. Dear Lord, we thank you for the journey of faith that you lead us on. Th thank you that Mackenzie has now declared her commitment to your church and pledged to walk with you through the rest of her life's journey. Bless her, we pray, as she seeks to remain committed to you. Amen. Thank you, guys. So, no, no, stay here. While everybody's up here, we we do have that one more thing. We need to talk with the congregation here, and kind of uh, we've got one question for you to kind of encapsulate all this. As you look at this picture of um, from infant to, to middle school to high school, this journey of faith, and we reminded um, this is a big part of why we exist as a church, um, as we uh, nurture young people into this relationship with Christ. And so, if the congregation would stand, uh, Jay has a question for you. Congregation, do you promise to love, encourage, and support these families and young people by teaching the gospel of God's love, by being an example of Christian faith and character, and by giving the strong support of God's family in fellowship, prayer, and service? If yes, say we do. While you're standing and while everybody's here on the platform, we're going to confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which will be on your screen. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. Good morning, everyone. We'll be doing offering at this time. If you are a guest or a visitor, we'll expect, we don't expect you to give. Please fill out the tab in your bulletin, and the children will be dismissed at this time for Children's Church. Thank you for joining us on New Sunday.
not a stranger to the dark Hide away, they say Cause we don't want your broken parts I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars Run away, they say No one will love you as you are But I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are glorious When the sharpest words wanna cut me down I'm gonna send a flood, gonna drown them out I am brave, I am bruised I am who I'm meant to be This is me Look out, cause here I come And I'm marching on to the beat of drum I'm not scared to be seen I make no apologies This is me bullets hits my skin well fire away cause today i won't let that shame sink in we are bursting through the barricades and reaching for the sun we are warriors and that's what we become i won't let them break me down to dust i know that there's a place for us We are very glad you are able to join us this morning. Many of you know me, but for those of you who don't, I'm Grace Kilderhus, and I have been attending Hope Church since the very first Sunday of my life, so I'm very honored and blessed to be able to give you the Youth Sunday message this morning. To give you all a little background about myself, I'll explain a little bit about me. I'm the daughter of Scott and Tammy Gilderhus. I'm 18 years old and currently a senior at Spencer High School. In fact, I'm graduating next week. I'm really good at telling a killer story, I love bike riding, and I have a slight obsession of going to Taco Bell with my little sister. <laughs> my friends describe me as kind, funny, outgoing, and sarcastic, but their most favorite adjective they like to give me is the word loud. <laughs> now that you kind of know me, let's move on to today's message entitled, This Is Me. Late last year, the movie The Greatest Showman was released, and America fell in love with P.T. Barnum, the man who started what we all know now of as the circus, in his story. To give you a little rundown about the movie and about who he was, here it is. 
P.T. Barnum was a poor and lonely orphan that dreams of fame and success after his father passes away. He wanted a life of luxury for him and his crush, who later becomes his wife. In 1860, New York City, money was tight and entertainment limited. So when P.T. Barnum loses his job, he decides to take out a loan to start his idea of collecting odd oddities. After very limited success and very few ticket sales, an idea springs into his mind about putting on a freak show. Yes, a freak show, you heard me right. As he felt people would pay to see those who are different than themselves. So he decides to put these people together and put on a show. By putting together a cast of individuals different than the usual person, people come from far and wide to see the show. Business started to boom. He decides to go on tour, but then he leaves his circus acts behind, who have become his family, and exchange them to go after fame and more money. His stars of the show were deeply hurt and through this started to sing a song about being an individual titled, This Is Me. It is one of the most well-known songs from the whole entire movie. If you haven't heard it yet, it's the song, the video that was just played um, in the background. I do apologize and feel bad for ruining the ending for you if you haven't seen it, but P.T. Barnum and his original cast members from the first show decide to reunite and become friends again and become more and more famous. So P.T. Barnum decides to retire from the show to spend more time with his family as he realizes they're what's more important to him. I want to focus on the song This Is Me for a bit, as it is one of Jay's favorite songs, and we listen to it on every trip we have gone on since it was first released. <laughs> trips vary for the youth group throughout the year. We go places close to home, and some trips take a little longer, up to two days worth of driving. We take 15 passenger vans because it's easier to transport all of us in 15 passenger vans instead of buses or individual cars. Um, so the speaker system is always turned up pretty loud to reach all the kids throughout the entire van. When I said previously that America fell in love with their greatest showman, Pastor Jay was of no exception. Every youth trip we've gone on, whether it be a retreat, which we recently went to to Ironwood Springs for the high schoolers, and the middle schoolers just went down to a camp down by Fort Dodge, or to Orange City for a bridge event, you'd easily be able to hear us blaring the song, This Is Me. I guarantee both high school and middle school youth, troop, youth group summer work trips will have plenty of times listening to the songs, and by the time we get home, we should all have it memorized. The van rides full of people are mainly pretty fun. I say mainly because I've had some situations where they always haven't been fun. For example, during the ride to Rocky this past summer, my van had a situation with seatbelts in a back seat. The people who were there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, the van rides with This Is Me pumping through the stereo are crazy. They consist of honking the horn, slapping the hood of the van, and doing random brake checks at the si stop signs. <laughs> yeah, we're not very safe. You name it, we've probably done it because we fully immerse ourselves into the song as we travel down the road. <laughs> At first, I couldn't, cu couldn't fully grasp why Pastor Jay was so obsessed with the song, This Is Me. As for me, it was just a song about being yourself. So this morning, as we get started, I have three points I would like to make about this song. First, God created us. Second, God chooses us. And third, God calls us to bear fruit. So let's get started. First of all, God created us. Eventually, after each time I listened to this song, which is close to 50 times by now, in the vans, I started to understand why it was all about that God created me to be. Something just clicked in my brain for the understanding of Jay's love for this song. The people singing the song were oddities, like I had said in the beginning. There is a woman with a full-grown beard known as the Bearded Lady, a man covered with ink from head to toe called the Tattoo Man, and an extremely shorter than the average man referred to as the dwarf man. All of these people in their circus acts were getting the chance to be who God created them to be, to shine and embrace their beautiful individuality on a platform for the world to see them for who they truly are. Being labeled an outcast in society is a title no one wants nor deserves, but oftentimes a title a lot of people get because they do not fit into what society expects or wants them to be. Each character in that film has certain gifts designed by God, but not many of these people get to use their gifts or to be seen in society because they have been labeled as outcasts, because people didn't want to spend the smallest bit of time getting to know them personally. 
This issue is still so prevalent today. I especially see this being lived out in our local Spencer High School. We have students that are walking up and down the hallways of our schools who are being looked at and judged just based on their outward appearance. It makes me really sad when I observe this because God created each of them with a unique personality and individually designed them, and God thought of it all by himself when he created us. I also feel that watching my parents at work or just interacting with people from the community or when I go to stores, I see coworkers in their workplaces roam their areas, keeping to themselves and not knowing the people around them. Today, people seem to be less and less interested in getting to know each other in the inside because of our first impressions on the outside. Seeing this and observing this, I feel we just don't want to associate with them. All we want to do is just keep to ourselves and never go out of our box of what feels comfortable. We don't want to see the differences that God has created us to be. But just maybe, with not associating with the so-called outcasts, leads us to undiscovered gifts of God who has really created them to be. Speaking of God creating us and it being Mother's Day, let's go to a verse commonly known about creation and moms. Psalms 139, 13 through 14 says, For I created you in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Now, I could get really scientific and go through the whole process on how we're actually knit together in our mother's womb, but it's kind of a long process and kind of boring, and that's not what today's about. But I do want to mention to you about the process that God spent so much time creating us to be individual. He knew our individual little quirks because he created it. For instance, my loudness trait. Like that trait in me, he was designing others with their special traits at the same time that God was making like the third star. To bring it back to times a little bit closer to us, within our time in our mother's womb, each little characteristic is formed in each little cell and is told exactly what it's going to do and be. Within those nine months, each hair is formed, trait distinguished, bodily function created, and so much more. God didn't spend all his time creating something so intricate, like your eye color, just for you to grow up and not like it. You're so precious and worthy, so he doesn't want us to go about changing ourselves just to try to fit in. I'm going to use the quote of, why fit in when you were born to stand out? Because it's true, and God doesn't want us to change for others, because the right people are going to love you for you and all your weird little quirks. So in sum, God created us uniquely. Our second point of today is God chooses us. For example, if, Miss, if the bearded lady decided she was just going to constantly shave her face so she could be normal, P.T. Barnum wouldn't have had a start to his show. Mr. Barnum specially chose each of his acts because they were special. Notice how I said special, not different or odd to him. That's the same with God in us. He specially chose us to come into this world and show others how awesome he is. Although we may seem different than what he'd like to, we'd like to think, we were chosen to be this way. Being appointed to have all these special qualities we do allows us to make our own path designed by God, so others who notice the beauty of our qualities can follow. It was kind of like when Jesus calls his first disciples. Matthew 14, 18 through 20 says, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him back. And followed him. Back in Bible times, Jesus' disciples couldn't understand why they were being cast as his followers. They just kind of jumped on board. Jesus was a good guy who wanted to do good, and they wanted to do the same. They did not even know what they were signing up to be. There wasn't any audition or sign-up sheet to be a disciple. Jesus chose each of the 12 as he saw so much good and potential in them, and they wanted and what they could do for the kingdom. And the disciples were oddities of their time, too. Peter, who was originally born Simon, denied Christ. That's kind of odd, considering Jesus was his closest friend and mentor. I wouldn't deny him. James the Elder carried shells. I don't think normal people carry around shells very often. Judas was quite the character, a severe nationalist for his Jewish faith. He joins Jesus' group in his wildest hopes Jesus would notice his spirit toward the religion and take him up on his offer of spreading it, which is crazy, right? 
Also, Judas symbolically had a noose with him, and that's one thing I consider highly odd. Matthew was the oddest one of the disciples and men at the time. Most men at the time were fishermen and worked by the water, but Matthew could read and write, which is some things men just didn't do or couldn't do in the time. He was weird because he wasn't a traditional man. In a sense, Jesus had his own show on the road, a little circus following behind him. But all of those oddities about the disciples is why Jesus chose them to go along with him. They all had unique gifts that would work to benefit both themselves and spreading God's word. That's the same with each of us. We were chosen to have special gifts that are benefiting God's kingdom. For example, the video we all just watched before the sermon, Kyle Gokin, wave Kyle. Oh, Kyle's in the room. Uh -huh. Sorry, I thought he'd be with us. <laughs> um, thought it out, planned it with Eric, directed it, and he sang in it, and then presented it to all of us. God chose Kyle to do this because he gave Kyle those special abilities. God chose us to be part of this group because he knew all of our gifts balance each other and all of our attributes will work together for the greater good. We might not all have the same gifts, but that's okay because God designs us to be all, God did not design us to all be the same. We're all different because that's the way God wanted it to be. Within each and every one of us, the qualities we all have account for who we are. The different qualities of different people actually draw people together. The differences of people aren't always physical or mental. Many times the unique gifts that people were created with drawing to one another and by getting to know one another is on the inside and those who see their hearts is where we can see the real differences. God chose us to follow him. Thirdly, God calls us to bear fruit. These gifts that God has given us can be demonstrated through the fruits of the spirit that we have been studying here in the series here at Hope Church. Let me remind you of the fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, through 23. It says, the fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I like how patience is a part of the fruits within the word forbearance. This one is a difficult for me. You see, what I know about myself is that this is a fruit that needs growth within me. Let me give you an example of this from my own life of my own impatience. Here's a story from this past year. It starts off with a question every junior in high school dreads to be asked. At this point, I had this feeling I had been asked this of me about four million times. Where are you going to college? What do you want to do with your life? My response was not always pleasant. I, <laughs> I responded quite harshly with saying, I don't know, please stop asking. You see, I have always been an impatient person. I had been struggling with the right answer, and I wanted to, the right answer right then and there, and I just wanted to know. I started tutoring colleges little by little. I had toured Dort as a junior and absolutely fell in love, and I was for sure that I was going there. Later in the year, a friend had asked if I wanted to tour South Dakota State, and I agreed as I believed I would just be acting as moral support. After I left the tour, I had a feeling that my life was flipped from right as I stepped on campus. I started to internally battle myself, starting to think God didn't want me there. Over the summer, I had applied, and while I was on the senior high trip to Rocky Mountain High, I got accepted. While at Rocky, my head and my heart were open, so when I returned home, I knew this is where God wanted me to go. I felt he really spoke to me on that trip. I had started my senior year still not fully committed on a college, but then I finally put my guard down and knew SDSU is where God wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely grown in my fruit of patience, but I still have so much more work to do. We all have fruits that need a little work on. We're always the not want mm, okay. <laughs> We're not always the most joyful people, but it's a fruit sown into us. God has created each of us for a very specific purpose, and that's to go out and be fruit trees. I know that sounds weird, but just hear me out. As we grow, both physically and spiritually, we grow both up and down. When tree grows taller, the roots get deeper. The deeper the roots, the stronger and wiser the tree. If we as Christians are rooted deep in the word and in Christ, we will stand firm against any adversity that comes our way. The taller we grow, the more we reach. That is something we as Christians should always do. As trees grow and seasons change, 
Seeds get harvested to go and plant new trees. A Christian life should be full of harvesting and sowing seeds of the Spirit into others. If we all claim we, we have the fruits of the Spirit but try not to implement them into others, are we really doing our jobs at, as a tree of Christ? Did you know there are actually trees called fruit salad trees? Yes, that's right. They can grow up to six different fruits at one time. If the fruits of the Spirit could actually grow on a tree, it'd be this one. All our traits can grow at one place, mature together, and then when ready, they can be picked so others can enjoy it. God has chosen us to be... Oh, there's a picture. <laughs> so God has chosen us to be fruit salad trees. With the fruit that has been sown into us, we're supposed to reach out and sow into others. For the growth of our roots, growth of the branches need to occur. When we reach out and grow our branches to extend our fruit, the roots in Christ will grow deeper and we will stand stronger. Bearing fruit is no easy task, as the farmer has to water it, nourish it, make sure it's getting enough light and attention, and all sorts of different things. You think that since I've spent a lot of time on a farm through lots of harvests, I would know what's needed, but I'm still a little shaky on that type of stuff. But what I do know is, God is the ultimate farmer and will harvest us to bear the best fruit to sow into others. For our conclusion today, anyways, these are the fruit seeds God has sown into us to sow into others. The fruits within us are the qualities that make us, us. We shouldn't be scared to display the fruits within us as they work as a balancing act between the ones we love and interact with. Returning back to the greatest showman, I'm going to quote part of the song we all love, I'd sing it to you, but I don't want to hurt your ears. When the sharpest words want to cut me down, I'm going to send a flood, going to drown them out. When the world wants to drag us due to our individuality in Christ, remember what we talked about today. God created you, so there's no one else like you. God chose you, and you were chosen because you will do great things in this world because you've been appointed in this world. And God chose you to bear fruit. Go into this world and be fruit salad trees for all to see and proudly proclaim, this is me. Please stand and let us respond with song. seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds the
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Thoughtless stand before the throne. quick since you're standing if uh, you've uh, been a Sunday school teacher and a youth sponsor I really want you to quick come up stage here quick so come up Sunday school teachers you subbed here quick come on up I think it's just neat to celebrate as we see all these young people making profession of faith going the distance with their faith in God accepting Christ professing the faith these people right here these adults all sat and prayed with them and have walked with them and so this isn't just my part here but these people that come and help week after week wednesday nights sunday nights and sunday mornings for sunday school so i just want to thank them real quick for being all that they are and helping with our young people <laughs> thank you guys so much now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be the glory and in the church and in christ jesus Amen. Thanks so much for coming.